Hey everyone! It's a beautiful day to learn. In this channel, you will be learning about machine shorthand. So, if you're interested, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell button for notifications. Yes, it's a beautiful day indeed because this video will be our second video or discussion for the standard real-time theory series. So, for by the way, in this video, at the end of this video, we will announce the winner, the three lucky winners of the 100 pesos worth of load or GCash for those who participated our to our anniversary celebration. Okay, so in this video, we will discuss uh, immediately lesson four. It's about uh, single characters in writing sentences. Okay, so we will learn how to write sentences in single characters. Okay, so let's start. Okay, brief. Brief is one of the important word or term that we need to know first before we proceed with our discussion. When we say brief, it is an outline that does not fully represent the sound of the word being outlined. So, it means it's a shortcut. So, example, we have the outline initial T for the word the, rather than writing it out more fully. So, briefs are also called short forms, abbreviations, or arbitraries. In the previous theory that we used, we call the this brief as arbitraries. So, here, in this theory, they use the term briefs. So let's be consistent and, the, and use the term brief for this theory. Another term that we need to be familiar is phrase. Phrase is, it is an outline representing two or more words that does not fully represent the sounds of those words. If brief is one word only, then phrase is two or more words. So, for example, we have initial S and final T for the phrase is the rather than writing each word as a separate um, line. So, you see, for the phrase is the, you only have to type initial S and final T. Okay? Here we can see on the screen high frequency briefs. When we say high frequency briefs, it means that these briefs are uh, most commonly used, okay? So we use them in a sentence from time to time. So we have these words or briefs, initial S for is, initial T for the, initial K for can, initial W for with, initial R for are, and vowel A for A or A. Okay, so let's be reminded of these briefs and we, we, we should use these briefs in our sentences so our so we can type our sentence um, quickly and accurately. Well, um, if you have noticed, by the way, we immediately go to lesson four because uh, lessons one to three in this text in this textbook or in this theory has already been discussed in the previous um videos that we had in the machine shorthand lessons uh playlist so you can find it's about how to how to um put the machines how to how to assemble the machine how to disassemble the machine what is the proper seating position the home key position and others so if you want to check out um, the videos about it, you can just um, open the playlist on machine shorthand lessons. Now let's proceed to inflected endings. When we say inflected endings, these are um, added to a word to change its function but not their meaning. So functions such as plural, um, past tense, or the, the gerund form. Of a certain word or verb. Okay, so uh, for words ending in final s or es, such as spells, so the root word there is spell. So to make it spells, we just add final s. So words ending in s or final es, we, you add um, final s. For words ending in ed, you add final d. 
for words ending in ing, you just add final g. So for the word uh, spells, so you add final s from spell, you add final s. And then for, for example, if the word is spelled, so we add final d. If the word is spelling, then we add final g. So from the root word spell, and then if uh, spells, then final s. If spelled, final d. If spelling, final g. Okay, so that is an uh, example of inflected endings. Then let's proceed. We will also learn here the major punctuation. So in lesson four, we will now learn the major punctuation. Those are period, comma, and question mark. So for period, the stroke will be final FPLT. So final FPLT is found at the upper, upper right bank. So we will use our right index, uh, middle ring, and little finger. So we typed it simultaneously, uh, striking the keyboard at one time. Okay, that is for the period. How about for comma? So we have final RBGS, so found at the lower right bank. And still, we will be using the same fingers. So we have we will use right index, middle ring, and little finger. So that's final R B G S representing comma. Then next we also have question mark. So question mark is initials S T P H. It's found in the upper left bank. So we will use what fingers? Our left um, index, middle ring, and little finger. So those are the major punctuations. So we have to remember and take note of these major punctuations. Now if we have high frequency briefs, we also have high frequency phrases. So these are phrases that are most commonly used. For example, is the, with the, are the. So for is the, the stroke is initial S and final T. For the with the, initial W, final T. For the are the, Initial R, final T. So you have to strike them simultaneously. You strike them at one time only. Okay? Okay, so we have here a note. Remember, do not use briefs and phrases not covered in the Sten Ed texts because it will result to conflict. So whatever briefs and phrases for this theory, it should be used for this theory alone. And then we should not uh, use or integrate other riffs and phrases using another theory. For example, the, the briefs or phrases that I have learned or we have learned in the previous the theory that we use and we apply it to this standard texts. So there it will result, it will result to conflict because it is not found in the dictionary of this theory. That's why let's be consistent with the, 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 the briefs and phrases of this theory. Let's apply it to this theory. Okay, so on the screen, we can see um, a word exercise. So there, this is something that you may study. You may just um, pause and then you practice typing using your keyboard or your improvised stenograph machine keyboard. Or if you have machine shortened at, at home, then it would be better so you can screenshot this or you may also pause this um, part so you practice typing these words i also have another um, word group exercise here so word exercise was shown previously and this one is word group so there are two words for example we have chop up held up okay so, though these are still single characters, okay, but uh, word group, okay. So, this is a word group exercise you may practice. You may screenshot this or you may hit the pause button. Okay, at this point, let's proceed to writing exercise. So, we have five sentences on the screen. For the first sentence, a cat sat. Period. So how are we going to um, write the strokes of this of the of this sentence? Okay, for the first number, 
will answer this. Okay, so for example, this is the stroke of the first sentence, a cat sat. So we have vowel A, and then slash is, um, it means separate stroke or next stroke. Okay, then we have initial K, vowel A, final T, slash, initial S, vowel A, final T, slash, final F, B, L, T. This is not, um, uh, I mean, this is not how it should, how it should appear in the, in the outline this is the stroke so this is how you type the words but when you type it remember the steno order or how it appears in the stroke so you can't see the slash it is just um, used here to to distinguish a uh, separate in a stroke so for a cat set including the period how many strokes so we have a uh, one two three four so a uh, one cat Another uh, two, sat three, and then final FPLT for period four. So there are four strokes for a cat sat. Okay. Okay, so how about you try numbers two, three, four, and five? Okay, you may uh, hit the pause button or you may screenshot. So I'll give you time to answer. Then we will. I'll I'll give you the correct answer or how or what is the stroke of the strokes of numbers two to five. Okay, so in three, two, one, let's reveal the answer. So here it is for number two. A cat is sad. Period. So the stroke is initial T. Notice that for initial T, there is a hyphen on the right side because if it is final T, the hyphen will be on the left side of the letter. So that is emphasized in order for us not to be confused whether it's initial or final. So the cat, initial T slash initial K, vowel A, final T. Then, that since that is is, so we will use the the brief for is, so you have initial S and then initial S, vowel A, final D for is sad, and then final F, T, for period. Okay, uh, the same with number three, so that is how you type the cat is, so is wet, period. Well, on number four, the cats are wet. Notice that it uses an inflected ending, so for cats, in order to make it um, uh, in plural form, such as cats, so there is an addition of final S to the word cat. So the cat and then final S are wet, period. Okay? And then for number five, a rag is wet. So you study how the words are written or what is the strokes of, what is the stroke of each sentence. Okay, then let's proceed to reading exercise. So this is what I, I told you or emphasized earlier that this is uh, the, the one that we presented earlier is the stroke and not the outline. So this is the outline. This is the notes. This is how um, the, the, how it looks like when you type the words or the sentence. So for example, here, uh, there are three sentences here. Okay, you can find the numbers above the sentence, each sentence. Okay, so one, number one, number two, and number three. So let's try to read number one. So it's initial T and final T, uh, initial S and final T, rather. So it's the phrase, is the, right? Then we can see another on the next line. We have, so we have initial R, vowel A, and then final G. So it's rag, and then initial W, vowel E, final T. So it's wet, and then initials S, T, P, H. So we can now read the sentence, the first sentence as, is the rag wet, and then initial S, T, P, H is question mark. Okay, so the answer for number one is, is the rag wet? Is the rag wet? Say yes, so that is the answer. Okay, how about number two and number three? 
Okay, how about you try to answer number two and number three, and we'll check your answers in three, two, one, zero. Okay, you may pause so you can answer. Okay, let's now reveal the answer. Okay, there you have it, the answers for number two and number three. So that is how we read number two and three. So let's start with number two. That's what we can see is initial R and final T. So that is a phrase or the. Okay, then the next line is we have initial R, vowel A, final G. And then we have another, another final S. So that is an example of inflected endings. So that is rags. And then we have initial W, vowel E, final T, so wet, and then still a question mark, initial S, T, P, H. So the answer is, are the rags wet? That's for number two. How about for number three? Initial T is the, and then you have initial T, vowel A, final R, that is tar, and then initial S for is, and then initial H, vowel O, final T for hot. And then we have final F, P, L, P, four, period. So it's very easy, right? <laughs> okay, so we are still at the accuracy level. So not yet on speed, but um, again, may I remind you that in machine shorthand or in stenography or in shorthand, speed and accuracy is very important. But while we are still learning the basics, so we have to uh, make sure that our answers are accurate before we go with speed. Because speed will follow. Okay, so we have here an assignment. It's a reading exercise for you. It's numbers 4, 5, and 6. So I will give you an assignment. Okay, so you will read. You will give me, you will comment down the answers for numbers 4, 5, and 6. So if you answer that, aside from you get to learn, you also get a chance to win. 30 pesos worth of load. Okay, so uh, please comment down below your answers for numbers 4, 5, and 6. So you answer all the three sentences and you, you'll get a chance to win 30 um, pesos worth of load or you may have it 30 pesos worth of Gcash. Okay, so oh, by the way, um, it's about time to reveal the three lucky winners of the 100 pesos worth of load or gcash uh, as a celebration of our um, anniversary so september 21 is our first anniversary so i have included here i written all the names who follow the instruction they both liked subscribed yes congratulations we have first winner rodeline rubin Congratulations, Rodin. So they're the, fir the persons who liked, subscribed, both our Facebook and um, YouTube channel. At the same time, they shared it. And another, we have Jaline Paco. Congratulations, Jaline. So the second winner is Jaline. First is Rodeline. Second is Jaline. And third is, we have the last uh, one, we have Mary Leia Valisera. Congratulations, um, Jolene, Rodeline, and Mary Leia Valisera. So again, here are the names of those who won the three lucky winners of 100 pesos worth of load or GCash. So girls, to claim your prize, just email machine shorthand 2021 at gmail.com or message machine shorthand in Facebook. Congratulations, lucky learners. So See you in my next video. I hope that um, you have learned something and I hope to learn more with you in my next video in Stened Real Time Theory Series or Stened Theory Series. So that's all. Bye everyone and see you in my next video learners.